A rising star. Yes, the wine world has grape varieties that lived in the shadows and now become relevant again as tastes and growing conditions change. Cabernet Franc is on the rise. On my travels around the world, it is a grape variety that gets mentioned often when I ask winemakers what they want to plant more of in the future. So let's explore Cabernet Franc by tasting some of the greatest examples from all corners of the planet. Let's get Francky. Cabernet Franc is by no means a new varietal. It has been around for a long time, so long that it is the father of not only one, but two of the most famous grape varieties in the world. Thanks to DNA profiling, scientists have established that Cabernet Franc together with Sauvignon Blanc are the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Franc also fathered Merlot together with Magdalene Noir de Charente. However, the other family members achieved fame in the 20th century. While Cabernet Franc stayed in obscurity, it was the salt in the soup and safety net for Bordeaux blends and was rarely in the spotlight. The variety is suited to cooler climates like the Chinon and Bourgueil appellations in the Loire. It can also perform really well in warmer climates such as Bordeaux where it is usually blended with Cabernet Sauvignon and or Merlot. Cabernet Franc buds and matures earlier than Cabernet Sauvignon which means that it is usually easier to ripen and it is less susceptible to bad weather conditions in autumn. I had a chat with Marchese Antinori CEO Renzo Cottarella about the grape last year as Antinori is betting heavily on the potential for Cabernet Franc planting it all over Italy. He thinks that Cabernet Franc is a modern varietal that combines red fruit character with freshness and structure which matches the current tastes pretty well. I agree overall. Cabernet Franc shows more red fruit character combined with vegetal aromas and a grippy texture. However, it has less tannins than Cabernet Sauvignon, but it can also be really rich and concentrated. But now let's taste the stuff. Leon has prepared a selection of Cabernet Francs from all around the world. So let's see what the hype is all about. Let's start off with the 2020 Ghiberto Saumur Rouge, which is probably one of the more famous Cabernet Francs in the world. The domain was founded in the 20th century and was taken over by Romain Ghiberto in 1996. He was a law student, but then decided that he should follow his heart and took over the winery. And he was mentored by Nadir Foucault, who was running Clos Rougeat at the time, one of the most famous Cabernet Francs in the world probably, and a wine that I taste a while ago when we were talking about hype wines or summer year wines. I don't remember the title, but I'll, I'll link it up somewhere up there. So the winery is part of the Saumur appellation in the Loire region. The winery or the vineyards are farmed organically and they only work with Chenin Blanc and Cabernet Franc. The wine is actually fairly low in alcohol, 12.5%. The fruit is fully destemmed. The wine ferments in concrete tanks and then ages in used barrels. So we shouldn't get any new oak flavor or, uh, well, spicy, smoky notes in this wine. So as you can see, the wine is fairly pale in color. It is dark ruby at the core, but, but you can see your fingers through the glass even at the core. So yeah, a light colored wine, which is fairly typical for Cabernet Francs from that part of the world. It is super bright in flavor. You got cherry fruit flavor, you got raspberries there. It's very fine and delicate. It reminds me a little bit of Pinot Noir. So there's quite a lot of elegance there and fruit forwardness. On the palate, it's really juicy, refreshing. The tannins are fine. They're present, but they're not intense at all. They're fairly delicate, beautiful, juicy, light and lively wine. In my experience over the last few years, Cabernet Franc has actually lost most of this herbaceousness in the Loire. It used to be quite spicy, sometimes really vegetal in aroma. So you had like green bell pepper, certainly quite a bit of red bell pepper flavor in the glass. But as the climate is warming up and the summers tend to be fairly warm also in the Loire, you don't necessarily get that as much anymore. You see my glass is empty, not because I drank it all, I spit it out, but still this is a delicious wine, but it is not a showstopper. You know, it's not like a wine, it, it might actually be a wine that you miss in a blind tasting or in a bigger lineup of wines. It's still delicious though. I'm going to rate this 91 points. This is something that I would love to have with light meal. 
maybe some cold cuts, just a traditional German Abendbrot where you eat a slice of bread topped with uh, some some sausage or ham. That's that's what this moin is made for. Next up, we have the 2021 Osmoti Cabernet Franc Seneca Lake from the Finger Lakes region in New York. This is a region that has gained traction over the last few years. It's not from New York City, so it's not made on skyscrapers. Instead, it's from New York State, so roughly 240 miles, 400 kilometers outside of the city center. Osmote started in 2014 and in 2020 they actually moved outside of the Tenant Winery where they rented some space into their own facility which is a former trucking garage apparently so this is a real garage winery. So the Finger Lakes are fairly cool. They are famous for Riesling for example so more of a cool climate varietal. And Cabernet Franc, Franc therefore makes a lot of sense. It's also more of a cool climate varietal. So let's see whether they can do what they do with Riesling, which can be quite outstanding with Cabernet Franc. All right. So I would say this is even lighter in color than the Giberto, the Saumur Cabernet Franc. So it's really, really pale. It's almost translucent, um, really light in color. Let's taste it. I like the flavor. Delicious. It smells of ripe cherries and plums. Do you know like a plum cake? This is kind of what this smells like. Really bright and intense. So on the palate, it is really fresh and light. There are not too many tannins there. There's a little bit of grip, but, but really just a little. Lots of juiciness, lots of freshness on the finish. So really, yeah, light, but, but profound. I like this quite a bit. I don't think you can just kind of put it next to any other red wine and it would show kind of what, what it's all about. But on its own, it's just delicious and refreshing. I'm going to rate this 91 points, even though it doesn't have like body and concentration and all that, but it it has it has depth. And I just saw that it actually only has 11.5% of alcohol. So show me a red wine that has only 11.5% of alcohol and tastes this good. By the way, Seneca Lake is 61 kilometers long and the deepest lake in the Finger Lakes. So you can feel that freshness coming from that lake going straight into the wine. One of the most famous wineries in the world using a large chunk of Cabernet Franc is Cheval Blanc from the Bordeaux region. Cabernet Franc obviously has played an important role in Bordeaux for a long time, but it usually only plays a smaller role. Even in Cheval Blanc's wines, it doesn't always make up more than 50% of the blend. Oftentimes Merlot actually plays the bigger role, but that's not the case with the next wine. So this wine is the 2019 Jean Faure Saint-Emilion Grand Cru, which uses 65% Cabernet Franc, 30% Merlot and 5% Malbec. So it's a fairly small winery with 19 hectares of vineyards located on the right bank in saint emilion It is organically certified and I believe it's currently on the path to being certified biodynamic or maybe the wines are already certified biodynamic. The winery and the vineyards are actually located next to Cheval Blanc so some of that greatness must, must have moved over the border from Cheval Blanc to Jean Faure. The wine is partially aged in New Oak. I believe one third is in New Oak and the rest is in an assortment of used barrels. And it stays in there for 18 months. And they use fairly little sulfur. So, well, they, they're trying to keep it as natural as possible. Even though I don't think this is actually like a natural wine. It's, but but yeah, they are, they are pretty hands off. So saint Emilion Grand Cru isn't necessarily always the most reliable appellation. There are some really bad ones. I mean, Grand Cru sounds pretty awesome, but, but there's actually quite a lot of producers who can produce saint Emilion Grand Cru, and some of them are not making great wine. But Jean Faure, I believe, is, is pretty pretty good. But let's, let's taste it first. So here we are clearly in a different territory. The wine is quite a bit darker. I mean, it's not opaque, it's not black. 
but it is quite a bit darker. This obviously also isn't 100% Cabernet Franc. It's blended with other varietals that might have added a little bit more color to it. But overall, my understanding is also that if Cabernet Franc grows in warmer climates, it does tend to bring more color and more concentration overall. It also has more alcohol than the previous wines, which isn't really difficult because, I mean, let's face it, you can't really find a lot of red wines with 12.5% alcohol or less anymore. This has 13.5%, which is still fairly low compared to other producers in that region. I mean, saint Emilion, especially in a warmer vintage, can get really rich and concentrated. I've tasted saint Emilion's that were 15, 15 and a half percent. So um, too much. This is extremely well made. I mean, it's super delicate, delicious, multi-layered. There are some flavors of cherries. There's also a little bit of cassis coming through. There are also notes of from flowers like violet, a little bit of lavender, really complex, very delicious. The oak doesn't stand out at all. It's really well integrated. So it's a very complex wine. On the palate, it's intense, a little bit of rusticity there. So the tannins are quite, quite grippy. There's good freshness there. The body is present, but it's not a heavy wine at all. It still has structure, which is obviously totally fine for Bordeaux from 2019. Those wines should be aged for a while. And this is still really, really young. But yeah, I like it. I like it still, even if there's a touch of rusticity there. The finish is long and vibrant. 92, 93 points. Same vintage, different country. It's the 2019 Le Macchiole Paleo, a pure Cabernet Franc from Tuscany in Italy. The winery is located in Bulgaria, a region that is famous for super Tuscan wines. It started off as a Bordeaux blend, but in 2001, they decided to make a pure Cabernet Franc here. And apparently this is really, really good. I haven't tasted it yet, so let's let's find out. Paleo seems to be a wild herb that is found in Tuscany. And this is fermented in concrete vessels and then aged in new barriques for 20 months. 20 months. Another good plop. Isn't paleo also the name of this diet where you're only allowed to eat unprocessed food like the people from the Stone Age? Probably nothing to do with the wine, even though they made wine in the Stone Age. Did you know that? So this is certainly quite a bit darker than all previous wines. It's 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 black. It's really dark at its core, even though this is a 100% Cabernet Franc, showing that a grape variety, the grape variety might be the same, but growing conditions, the region, the climate also play an important role in shaping the character of a wine. On the palate, it's very rich, but it retains its red fruit character. I think there's still like red currant flavors coming through a little bit of uh, strawberries, but there's also dark fruit character as well. Quite a lot of spiciness, a little bit of chocolate mocha flavors seeping in too. I guess this is mainly due to the use of new oak. The oak certainly shows more than in the previous wine. It's a little bit more, a little bit more in your face. On the palate, it's very grippy and intense. I think there's quite a lot of oak tannin coming through. Next up, a little bit of acidity. And it's overall a bit disjointed. I think this wine is made to impress with its intensity and its oak flavors, but it doesn't really allow the Cabernet Franc to shine, in my opinion. Even though this is 100% Cabernet Franc, it just kind of feels like, like, like they tried to make Cabernet Sauvignon out of Cabernet Franc. The wine actually received 98 points on robertparker.com, but, but I don't think it deserves that. I, I honestly think that that this is not really highlighting the fruit. It's more highlighting the winemaking process. So I'm actually going to rate this 92 points. I think it is a very well-made wine. I think it probably is way too young, so there's quite a lot of potential there for it. But I don't think that it will ever show Cabernet Franc in the way the previous wines did. And 
express its its true beauty. Instead, I really think they they try to do something here that the grapes didn't wanna didn't wanna give. So next up, we have the 2019 Angelica Zabata from Cantena Zabata, which is a Cabernet Franc from Argentina, Mendoza in Argentina to be more precise. And it also says Alta here on the label, which I'm assuming means that it's from higher located vineyards. It's also 13.5% of alcohol, so a little bit lower. I mean, it's quite a lot of wine coming out of Argentina that has more alcohol than that. So Cabernet Franc plays a more and more important role in Argentina and in Chile as well. So. But still, I mean, Argentina is Malbec country, which we all know. The wine was aged for 18 months in 50% new barriques. So again, I guess this is going to be a little bit more intense and rich. But yeah. as you can see, the color is already very dark. This is really intense, more like the, the previous wine. Pure Cabernet Franc, but with lots of concentration. But the flavor is more balanced and we have more fruit here. So we have flavors of raspberries, strawberries. It's also cherries, a little bit of darker fruit like blackberries coming through. The, the oak actually is pretty, pretty much in the background here, underlining the fruit. On the palate, this is intense, grippy, juicy. There's body there, there are fine polished tannins. Lots of freshness on the back end. So this is really well composed. So the fruit is super bright and intense. And, and I, I just don't find anything here that, that bothers me. It's all really polished. It could obviously have more depth, concentration, intensity. But I'm going to rate this 95 points. I think it's a delicious wine. And we're moving over the Andes to the neighbor of Argentina, Chile. And this is the 2019 Garage Wine Company Las Higueras, Higueras Vineyards from Maule in Chile. So the second garage winery in the tasting so far. So while the winery started as a garage winery, it doesn't seem to be one anymore with 35 hectares of vineyards. They focus on reviving old plots of land, like old vineyards, and making exciting wines out of those gnarly old vines. This wine is actually from 120-year-old Cabernet Franc vines that are bush trains, so they look like little trees, basically. And that all sounds pretty cool. The wine is fermented in concrete tanks and then aged in used barrels. So, well, they, they try to kind of stay away from smoky oak flavors here, I guess. This wine certainly isn't the darkest wine in the tasting, but it's also not the lightest colored one. Those old vines usually produce very small clusters of grapes that have very small berries. And if you have small berries, you tend to get more, more flavor, more tannins, more structure into the wine. The wine smells of ripe cherries, Strawberries, there's a little bit of plum character coming through as well. Certainly not a lot of oak flavor. On the palate, it's actually juicy, grippy, good freshness there. It's quite complete. It's maybe not as bright in flavor as the previous wine, but it is a very good wine. I'm going to rate this 93 points. I think it's, it's delicious. I love the backstory. But in the glass, it just doesn't pop as much as the wine before this one. So, but 93 is, is a very good score. Last but not least, I'm tasting the 2020 Damascene Cabernet Franc from Stellenbosch in South Africa. So the wine is from a cooler vineyard that was planted in 2004. So it's not 120 years old, it's 20 years old. But that, that doesn't always mean a lot. I mean, you can make great wine from younger vineyards. It is aged for 11 months in larger oak vats and their tagline seems to be less cult, more cultivation. I, I like that. Again, medium dark in color. So, well, more towards the middle at least. There's, there's quite a bit of concentration here, but it's, it's not super dark. This is interesting. I mean, on the nose, it actually has quite a lot of pipe flavor, like old pipes, like cold smoke. This appears to be the most most 
herbaceous, smoky, peppery Cabernet Franc in the whole tasting, even though we've tasted some from very cool places like the Loire or the Finger Lakes region. But but this is actually quite quite peppery and interesting. But South Africa often has this um, old world character, this slight rusticity. Um, but yeah, this this is different. On the palate, it's juicy, intense, lots of freshness there. The tannins are ripe and round. But yeah, this is this is a complete wine that is a bit edgy though. But I like edgy every now and then, and this. This feels right. So I'm going to score this 94 points. I think it is a delicious, delicious Cabernet Franc. In summary, the hype is real. Cabernet Franc can do a lot of things really well. It can perform well in cool climates. It can perform well in warm climates. It can be delicious at 11.5% alcohol, like this smoky Finger Lakes Cabernet Franc proved. But also richer and more concentrated styles can be really, really good. I think when it comes to scores, the Angelica Sabata actually was the best wine in the tasting. But the wine that I'd love to drink for dinner is this, the Osmoti, which was just something really exciting and very new also for me. And none of the wines really underperformed. I mean, the Paleo had a really high rating and I didn't think it was 98 points for sure, but I would drink them all. I mean, they were they were delicious. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what do you think about Cabernet Franc? Have you tasted some? Yes, no, maybe, maybe one day. Let me know down in the comments. I hope I see you again very soon. Until then, well then, that was not good. But anyways, until then, stay thirsty.